I think everybody knows about the Belt and Roads Initiative uh, from the uh, Chinese uh, government. But there's one part of that which you could call the Polar Silk Road, which is the, what the, uh, the uh, Russian called the Northern Sea Route, which is, uh, of course, included in that. Your company, having a long-term perspective, how, how do you see the logistics and the energy supply through this part of the world? You know, as energy companies, you have to look for next uh, 20, 30 years about what kind of world will be. So what the functions you are going to play for next 20, 30 years in the, the new world. And we see that the, as a business, either energy company or other kind, kind of companies, we are not just making money through our business. We are add value to the society either with the, the society that we operate in, and also we contribute value to the whole economy, global economy. So in this regard, technology, uh, innovation, and uh, especially how to using the current, we, we call internet technology, like digitalization, IOT, IOT and the uh, artificial in, in intelligence. So those put together will change in our traditional way of production of energy and transformation of energy and the utilization of energy. So this is something I think we can, through the technology, bring Belt Road countries, even Arctic countries together. Thank you. Any questions from the audience? Hi, um, I teach uh, law at a business school in Boston and uh, my colleague and I here were absolutely fascinated that Clinton Cole came up. We would love to study the issue more. Could you name an initiative that you think is working well in that area? Because we've heard a lot of skepticism that there's no such thing as clean coal. Uh, you know, traditionally we're using coal as a fuel. If you think this is not right way, we're using coal as a stock material, it will be making differences. So CO2 will become a, a new material. So this is a, one of the things, one of the emphasis that we consider. If we're taking coal as a fuel, that's tremendous discharge of CO2s. Other pollutants, relatively speaking, are easier to, to deal with. CO2, because of the, the, the huge volume, volume, we have to consider how to reutilize the CO2 as resources through uh, engineering processes, not just burning as a fuel. We have some pilot projects that are taking place in China. Perhaps you, you heard that the one of the areas that we, we are using new, new technology to promote the efficiency of the energy, which we mean coal. So in the power generation coal in China, especially for those pilot uh, projects, the, the environmental uh, information or data can compare with the natural gas. So from all these church uh, areas, there was another question from over there. Yes, um, Rasmus Bertelsen from uh, Tromsø again. One question, uh, what role do you see for Russian and Alaskan natural gas in the energy transformation of China? I'm thinking particularly concerning fighting air pollution in large Chinese cities. So the role of Russian and Alaskan natural gas. Thank you. To deal with the uh, environmental issues there in China, the most uh, available uh, resources is natural gas from the world, not just from China, including from Russia. And unfortunately, you see that there's uh, not just China and India, you see Europe. The demand for the uh, natural gas are soaring. So dragging the price of the natural gas to NLG soaring. So this might be the, the, uh, the long-term case, not the short-term case. 
However, dealing with the environmental issues that the people have to use in clean uh, energy, which is the gas, especially the gas from Russia, from Qatar, from Australia, especially from US. Shale gas will be tremendous in the future. I, I think those are the, the best sources for the future needs of the developed country, including China and Europe, and uh, uh, China and India, and also Europe. Any additional questions? If not, I have one last question. Okay. Uh, given uh, the importance of the size of your company, you must, of course, take uh, clean energy research very seriously. What is your priorities in terms of trying to develop new technologies for clean energy? Uh, we, we have spent a lot of efforts on the research and the, uh, the uh, industry uh, pilot projects, that's including uh, biofuels, including the, uh, the coal to gas. The one of the issues that, uh, uh, that we are working on how to using the CO2 being a material or resources. And this is not short-term uh, issue, but this will be a long-term issue. That we consider CO2 as resources. Uh, is there any uh, economical just justifications today for any of these clean, clean energies, or are they still so expensive that they're not realistic? Uh, currently, it's not realistic. And I'm talking about research program. But in, in our uh, great efforts is on the uh, shit gas development there in China. We are not lucky in US, which is quite cheap. We are more expensive than that US because the, uh, the barrier the, uh, is uh, very deep, about double depths like in US, in the remote areas, the mountain areas, and there's no infrastructure. All those add up the cost. But even with this, Currently, we can make this commercially produced with the current gas price in there in China. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you.